Welcome to the University of the Netherlands lecture series by Rolf Hut. This is the lecture series on how to become an inventor with stuff you have laying around at your home. The original lecture was done in Dutch and what I did is I dubbed them over into English. Uh, my apologies for any delay in lip syncing, I just dubbed it while listening to my own uh, voice stream um, and I did not take out the Dutch intro. So don't step away because of that. We will switch to English in a few seconds. Here we go. Waarom heb je alleen een aanzichtkaart en een fotolijstje nodig om een uitvinder te worden? Dit is de Universiteit van Nederland. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome at my lecture. Anyone that ever Google images scientist will probably find one of two images. This is the first image that you'll probably find and it's always a brilliant mind in a lab. He isn't wearing a lab coat because probably he had to go in the picture. And, and he decides in his lab to do a very complicated experiment. And um, that's the half of what you would find if you search for a scientist. The other half of what you find are people like these that out of nothing in front of a blackboard come up with brilliant formulas that describe nature and well mostly get Nobel prizes the other group somewhat less so they come up with brilliant formulas um, and that's a skewed image because science is not either the man at the blackboard or the man in the lab Newton, sitting under his tree, who saw that apple falling, um, he came up with a theory that said objects with mass attract each other. That was his theory. And then, then he did an experiment, so for Newton, those pictures are the same. So his experiment was observing that apple. But then from his theory comes the prediction uh, of how satellites circle the Earth, or the prediction of how planets circle around the Sun. And predictions like that you can test with new experiments. And the good thing is that if you do that experiment uh, accurate enough, you will always find a hole in the theory somewhere. It, it appeared that the orbit of Mercury around the Sun didn't exactly fit the Newtonian theory. And, and when Einstein said, well, oh wait, I got a new set of data, uh, the orbit of Mercur Mercury and some other experiments, then, then Einstein, seeing all that, he said that something is going on. I need a new theory to describe that. And so he came up with the theory of relativity. And he proved that Newton's theory was, was just a boundary condition. That's why it's essential that scientists keep doing experiments. You need that circle. You cannot do science only from a blackboard. And that, and that means that... Um, well, in the meantime, I'm a bit fiddling around here. Um, I, need to, I need some duct tape. Yeah, here. Um, it means that for science, we need experiments. But in daily life, we also need measurements. Uh, everybody has a thermostat somewhere in his home that measures the temperature in your house. Um, and when it's too hot or when it's too cold, then it will turn on the heater. So you need a measurement for that. So without measurements, you cannot do a whole lot in your life. But that's all just justification. Because um, my fun is, in, is that doing measurements, and mostly coming up with new measurements, is tremendous fun. That's why you see me fiddling around here with all this uh, photo frame. Um, I just bought this at the Senos store in the Kalverstraat. Um, so, um, so what I have here is a, a, a piezo buzzer. It's a um, piezo is a ceramic, and if you bend it a little bit, you'll get a very small uh, electric voltage across it, a charge. The other way around, if you put some charge on it, it will bend. So um, if you put uh, current on it, off on off, it will vibrate. So these things uh, are part of alarm buzzers, but they're also used in microphones. 
So they'll, they'll, air vibrations will be transformed into electricity. And the fun thing is 30 cents. So you could use it for anything. Um, for example, um, um, oh, super glue. Um, I once opened it with my mouth. Um, really, don't. It's one full week like that. Um, so, uh, super glue. Um, the other junk I have lying around here is a um, audio cable. Same thing that you, that you put in your uh, iPhones. So, I don't have that material that creates charge if it bends. I've glued that on a photo frame. So, I'm about at one euro fifty in cost. Um, soldering iron. Hot, be careful. Audience question, uh, anyone that learned to solder in school? Good. So if you look around in the audience, you see a generation gap. So both, the both of you, very good. Um, I have to. I have to admit, I I learned to solder in in school, but I had to make a beautiful fish into instead of something that just works, which is one of the things I'll keep repeating. So I I just soldered a simple audio cable to that photo frame with the piezo buzzer. So this is my first measuring apparatus. Um, we're in club air, so if they have a good sound system anywhere, it's here. Um, so if I plug this in. What we use this for, um, I work uh, at Water Management, uh, Delft University of Technology. This was our first prototype ring gauge. So you put this outside and you can hear and measure how hard it rains. Um, of course, you cannot put this outside for too long. Uh, it will rust away. But this is how I like to do science. Um, make a prototype that costs almost nothing just to test if stuff works. So you can accelerate that cycle of science with experiments, new data, theory. You can accelerate that. And the good thing is, I don't first apply for a huge grant. I just build something. Um, can, can we do this with coffee? No. Oh, no, doesn't work with coffee. Well, and you think, oh, it doesn't work. Um, we have to realize that raindrops fall with about 10 meters per second at terminal velocity. So uh, I, I can, I can, well, um, make this at home. Um, in my website, you can find instructions on how to do that. And um, you can order these things, all these stuff online. This is, of course, not ideal. So in Delft, um, we went further to see if we can take this principle and make it into a real rain gauge. Um, so it, that will require some electronics to calculate that sound into uh, rain. Oh, something else. I was asked to um, make rain gauges that people can take with them in a citizen science project. Um, and this is, uh, oh, da -da -da. yeah, here. This is my second version of the same principal rain gauge. So, um, if you look over here, you can see the exact same piezo buzzer. Um, so this will, if you walk outside with it, will also measure rain. And then in here, there's a Bluetooth headset, the same thing that taxi drivers always use. Um, so I just glued that together. If you walk with this uh, outside, then the sound will be sent to your phone. And Rutger van Ipere, uh, who's somewhere here in the room, he made an app for me that translates that app into decibels, stores it, so you know how hard it rains on your umbrella. And we send it to the weather authorities and they know how much it rains. Um, I see a few people in the, in, the, in, the, in the audience that would use this umbrella, but not everybody does. Um, so I talked to the guys at Sense Umbrellas that make more fancy umbrellas. Um, and we're, with, we're looking if we can get this on market. It's not there yet, but we're looking at it. So then this, the sensor's over here, and then the wires go through this tube, and then you hide the scent uh, equipment in, in this handle. So that's how you go from an idea to a product. Then that's, that's very important I, I, that, that we recognize that we start with a small prototype like that. And I believe that everyone can do that at home. Uh, anyone, anyone has a Wii at home? 
one of the first things I did that really got me into measuring was hacking this Wii. Um, I saw the Johnny Lee videos on YouTube and he hacked the Bluetooth connection between the Wii mode and the Wii itself with his laptop. So, but he is a computer scientist, so he, he mainly used it for, can I use it as a pointer? It's kind of the same thing that the Wii does. But the good thing about the online community nowadays is that they all share how they do it. And they share their software. I'm not a software hero. I mean, I can do a little bit of hacking, but that's it. So, but with his drivers, I could read whatever's happening in this Wii. And this thing has a very good infrared camera in it. And when Nintendo brought the Wii to market, they, they tripled the market of infrared cameras, making this thing a lot cheaper. So suddenly I was able to use an infrared camera in my science. So in the lectures that I'm going to give here, um, we're going to be doing measurements using stuff we have at home. And um, careful. Um, everyone, well, not everybody at home has one, but it, it has become a lot cheaper because of mass production. Acoustic range measurements, acoustic distance measurements. Any, anyone who has an acoustic range finder at home? What do you use it for? I've got exactly the same version right here. Anyone else have a parking aid in his car? The beeper thing. You all have acoustic range sensors. They have become so cheap that we, that man and I, can use them in our Arduinos because they're available in cars. They're, they've become mass uh, produced. There's one over here. I, 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 I aimed it at the water in this tank. So what it does, it sends a sound signal. It, it, weigh, it counts how long it take before it comes back. The engineers at Mercedes have solved all of that and I can just read out here how that works. So I got a little signal amplifier here. So this, this very weak signal from the acoustic range sensor will be amplified. And then here I have an Arduino, same as that man has. And it's Arduino is basically a computer on the footprint of a credit card. And what that does is it takes the uh, electrical signal and it makes it into a digital signal that computers understand. And it will send it to my computer over there so we can see what the water level is doing. So um, this is what we're measuring right now. And I got this, so if I move this boat a little bit and create some waves, you can actually see those waves coming. Uh, and I, I got published this on the internet and, and a, a hundred other people also did that. So everybody can make this at home. It doesn't cost I think it's like twenty dollars, and a lot of the stuff you have lying around. This took me about thirty minutes. I'm using it to measure water level. I'm at water management, so my applications are in the water world. But if you want to use it, I don't know, in your home to make something in your in your garage to see if you still have room when parking, you can make it yourself. You can buy it. But it makes you proud if you make it yourself. And of course, you cannot blame anyone if you hit the back of your garage that it wasn't your fault. Um, so anyone can make this. One, but, but then uh, there is a little problem. Um, one of the big questions here is, how often do we need to measure here? I, I said I'm mainly interested in water. Um, and if you look at the fluctuating water level, the average is about equal, but you see these, these uh, peaks in my data. So if I only measure once a day, I could be off. So how often you measure is very dependent on what you want to do with it. And in my next lecture, I will explain how you can use mathematics to answer that question. Thank you.